You're never going to convince the price shopper. You're not going to win them over and that's okay. That's not who you're talking to. You're talking to the person that has already resonated with you enough to say, yeah, I think you could be my guide if you offered me the transformation I'm looking for in a format that I can trust myself to step into. Mm. On this episode, we are talking about the big question. How do we price things? This is a good one. How do we price things? I want to start with this, uh, and this is a little bit of a shift in mindset, but I want you to recognize that people find money to pay for what they want, regardless of cost. It's true. They do the same people that say, I don't have the money for, or I can't do, or I won't do, or it's not the right time, or I don't have the budget for. They're also paying for a lot of things in their life that they feel that they need or they want. This is really important because if someone has a price objection, they are not sold on why something is going to benefit them and why it's going to provide a transformation for them. They're not sold on that. And if you think about this, nobody, I don't care if they ha or have millions of dollars stashed, they could be a billionaire, whatever. Nobody ever has the budget to pay for something they didn't know they needed. <laughs> they don't, it just doesn't work that way. Or no they one, don't know how it will fit in their life or they don't believe it will work. Yeah. Yes. All those questions have to be answered. So it's not actually about the number, not nearly as much as you think it is. No, but when you know something's value and I just, and I want to share this, just a little story here uh, before we get into just sort of the, the main things. So uh, especially cause I know like we got men and list, and women listening, but for you women, you'll really relate to this one. If you go to the store and you see a dress and you didn't know you needed a dress and you, it looks cute. And you look at the price tag and it's way more than you would have normally spent on a dress. You probably put it back. You don't even try it on. However, if you're in the store and you see this dress and it is looking amazing and there's no price tag on it and you are going to try things on anyway, you probably grab it and go try it on. And now if you go try it on, and it looks amazing. You're loving how you look in this dress. Your eyes looking brighter. Your body's looking slamming. Everything's looking amazing. Um, and you start envisioning like where you're going to wear this dress. Oh, I can wear it to this event and this event and people are going to look and I'm going to feel confident. And I love how it feels. You start visualizing what this is going to be like and where you're going to wear it. And then you go up to the cash register and you say, how much is this dress? Pretty confident, no matter what number they say, even if it's out of that budget, you're going to find a way to pay for it because you've already envisioned where you're going to wear it and why this dress is going to help you. So you put that first people find money for what they want, regardless of cost always. Well, I think you've touched on a really important point here that I want to expand on a little bit that you are never selling an offer. You're never selling a package. You're never setting, selling a pack of hours with you. You're never selling a pack of PDFs or whatever it is. You're always selling the transformation because that's the only reason why anybody buys anything is that how does this help me solve a problem and arrive at this transformation that I am looking for that I want. And I know I'm ready for it. You know, so it really clarifies the pricing conversation when you stop obsessing about here's all the things in the kit and caboodle and, you know, and trying to convince people that each one of these things is worth something. Mm, it's so instead, important. Yeah. Instead discussing the change that they're going to experience in their life as a result of this investment. And this crosses over everywhere. I see this, not just on sales calls or selling from stage, mm. but I see it on sales pages or email copy. People spend <laughs> yeah. so much time explaining the deliverables, which a person reading that, that means nothing to them. <laughs> They're not going, hmm, what can I spend money on today? That's 12 weeks of coaching and this and that, you know, and this many zoom calls and this many things that I get no to them. That might just feel like more work when you can speak into the results that they're going to feel that they're going to experience that they're going to gain. That's the important part when they can start envisioning, when they can start seeing themselves in that transformation, the deliverables don't even really matter. They need to be there, but they are really secondary. In fact, 90% of your stuff should be focused on the transformation. I think this is a really important point of clarity. Like we, we're not saying don't provide details about the way you provide that transformation, but speak about it in terms of this is step-by-step -step, the micro changes that take place to arrive at that general transformation, you know, mm -hmm. and that's why you need them. That's yes, why my absolutely. system matters. And then let's talk about comparison, Sinclair, because this can get in people's heads. Yeah, this is essential. Okay. So 
<laughs> stop comparing. Let's just make it really simple because what you do and how you provide it to a specific customer is actually irrelevant when you compare it to somebody else. Mm. What do you want to say about it? Well, I, it, when you are pricing something and you're looking at, well, what is this other person that has something comparable do um, that you're taking away from your whole transformation and what makes you unique. So it's the thing not to do for sure. You don't want to actually compare to other people because you're just putting yourself in a box then, and then that attracts that price shopper. So instead, what you want to do is look at what's the transformation I provide. What's my experience with that transformation? Why? Am I the person to help with this and speak into that and make that the relatable story that you're sharing versus just, this is what the market's doing. This is what somebody else is doing, which attracts the price shopper. Right. You're never going to convince the price shopper. You're not going to win them over and that's okay. That's not who you're talking to. You're talking to the person that has already resonated with you enough to say, yeah, I think you could be my guide. If you offered me the transformation I'm looking for in a format that I can trust myself to step into mm. a lot about a sale is making sure that the client trusts themselves to show up and do the work and experience the tran transformation. So it's not it's not about you at all. Really? No, nope. like, no, nope. you need the track record. You need the method and they need to trust themselves. The other thing it. when it comes to price is to look at the time and what, and I want to get you away from, from thinking of yourself being an hourly person. Cause it's not what it is, but you do have to think of your time and where are you spending the most priority time of yours? What's your unique ability and where should you mostly be spending your time? And then from there, how do I make impact with clients? Now, if you are, for example, I'm just going to use this as an example. Let's just say you are um, a counselor that takes a certain amount of clients a day right now. And you're thinking, okay, well, I charge, you know, $400 an hour and I maybe should raise it to 600 because somebody else is charging that, but someone down the street's charging 150. You're getting into a whole conversation of comparison and time money for your hours, that, which is where I don't want you. Instead, I want you to look at, what is the impact you're trying to make for the year? What is your overall vision for the year? And then what's your time worth? What's your time worth for helping people achieve the results that you offer? What's your time worth? If you're thinking of your unique ability, how much time you have in a week, a month, a year, and where you can make the most impact, think through that first and then price out. For example, if your time is worth a half a million dollars a year. That's what you know that you're going to earn. That's what you're after earning. That's where you are half a million dollars a year. And you know, you are best suited to be high level selling or high level recruiting or, um, only working with super, um, impactful leaders that are going to help reach other people. You think that through first and then divide that 500,000 by the amount of hours you're working. Now, you know, your block of time that you can charge for anything for clients, for speakers, for consulting, for anything, but you have to do that number first to serve yourself, to understand that first. And then you can go be impactful and price things for people. I think that's so important. So being honest about your own capacity to serve well is essential, right? So like I had, um, a woman who I was coaching last week about, you know, how to help people write their hormones and she could really only take 10 to 12 of these at a time. I said, okay. So, and she, she wanted to sell it at 4,000 because she could trust herself to close that at 4,000. It's like, okay, now let's chunk that out to a whole year's worth. What does that mean that you're actually making? Can you survive on that? And can your business thrive? And the answer was no, she couldn't, there'd be no way to make her rent. It's like, so yeah. you're telling me you have the only, the, the only method that does X, Y, Z and it changes people's lives. And the format that you have it in means that you can only do 10 to 12 at a time. And you want to price it at this, that doesn't make any sense, you know, and then I'll, I'll share another example about how to layer in another, um, piece of complexity here. And that is, you know, how much of your team's time, how much of your business's resources is it going to take to fulfill this? Mm. So I was working with a, a brand designer last week. She only wants to do three major projects at a time and it has, you know, a big lift for her team. And she wanted to really underprice herself because she was making it about her and what am I worth instead of how does this impact this person? How does it change their business? And what is it going to cost me to run this business and do so it good. well? So good. Something I want to add to that 
uh, too, and this comes up a lot with clients where they'll think, um, but I feel guilty. Someone wants my help with this, or someone wants me to speak, or someone wants me to do this. And I should, the market only charges this. And they, you go through this people pleasing guilt mode. What I want you to do for those things is I want you to really think through those numbers and go, what actually gets me excited about this? So if it's something that's not critical and you think, what would actually get me excited about this? You come up with that number. And now if they say no to that, there's no issue because you were already clear. This is the number that gets me excited and makes it worth it. Otherwise, what happens is we price too low because we think that's what the market's demanding. That's what somebody else wants. And then we're resentful that we're spending our time doing that. But if you think that process through first, it makes it a lot easier to quote your fees for speaking, for consulting, for selling, for whatever, because you're already clear on that. Yeah, exactly. So, and if you had that uh oh, yucky moment in your stomach of what, what if people can't afford me? Go back and listen to our other episode about how to know when it's time to raise your rates. Right? So, check that one out. 